Well, it is January the 10th, 2024, and I appreciate you coming by, cruising by uh, for my daily devotions. Um, we are going to look at Ephesians 6, John 18, Psalm 9, Deuteronomy chapter 5. Uh, yesterday, we read the 17th chapter of John. It's the high priestly prayer of Jesus. The, the whole uh, chapter is devoted to, he, devo he prays, and uh, we probably should learn from him and pray about like he prays. But the third verse says this, now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Eternal life is a relationship. It's a relationship with God through Christ. It's knowing God in the person of Jesus. It's not a religion, not hopping through a bunch of crazy religious hoops. It's a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. It's about knowing God in a personal way. Those who are saved know God in a personal way. We need to live that, need to flesh that out every day. And I pray that you'll hang on to that. Let's take a minute and pray and we'll jump into the word for today. Father, speak to us. Change our hearts by what we hear. Make us new and different because we heard from you today is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Ephesians chapter 6. And uh, in a little bit, after I finish this, I'm going to go put a suit on and I, I go to work today. And uh, I'm going to do a funeral for two brothers that died close together. And a uh, uh, lot, lot of loss in that family today. Two, two of their brothers passed away. And so, uh, you know, ask God to use me to bring some comfort to those folks and celebrate their lives. And um, something else I'm going to ask you to just pray about. Uh, I sell funeral cremation insurance. I have made no money for six weeks. That doesn't work so well. I, I'm on Social Security, which is diminished because I was out of ministry. I was in ministry for 30 years, and you can either opt out or pay like you're self-employed, and I opted out. So mine is diminished some, and I need to make some money. So just remember that in your prayers, if you wouldn't mind. And uh, God will take care of me. He always has, and he'll do it this time. Let's look at the word, Ephesians chapter 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you, and you may enjoy long life on the earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Slaves, obey your earthly masters and re with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Obey them not only to win their favor, when their eye is on you, but like slaves of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not men, because you know that the Lord will reward everyone for whatever good he does, whether he is slave or free. And masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven, and there is no favoritism with him. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you may be, able, may be able to take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you've done everything to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me that where, whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Tychicus, the dear brother and faithful servant in the Lord, will tell you everything so that you also may know how I am and what I am doing. I am sending him to you for this very purpose that you may know how we are, and that he may encourage you. Peace be peace to the brothers 
and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. And then tomorrow we'll jump into Philippians, John chapter 18. John chapter 18. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was an olive grove, and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the grove, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, lanterns and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you, you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And Judas the traitor was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Who is it you want? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. I told you that I am he, Jesus answered. If you're looking for me, then let those men... Go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him. They brought him to Annas who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it would be good if one man died for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. Because, his, the, because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard. But Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple, who was known to the high priest, came back, spoke to the girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. You're... You are not one of his disciples, are you? The girl at the door asked Peter. He replied, I am not. It was cold, and the servants of the officials stood around a fire they had made to keep, keep warm. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I've spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the disciples struck him, one of the officials struck him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest? He demanded. If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify to what, what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Then Annas sent him still bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. I'm going to take a drink of coffee. Throat's a little scratchy. As Simon Peter stood warming himself, he asked, he was asked, you're not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him, didn't I see you with him in the olive grove? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment, a rooster began to crow. Then the Jews led Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now, it was early morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, the Jews did not enter the palace. They wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, What charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, the Jews objected. The point was they were trying to get him killed, okay? And the, the, the uh, Romans had the authority to execute. The Jews did not. This happened so that the words Jesus had spoken, spoken indicating that the kind of death he was going to die would be fulfilled. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew, Pilate replied? It was your people and your chief priests who handed you over to me. What is it that you have done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. 
You're a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you're right in saying I'm a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. That's still true. Everybody on the side of truth listens to Jesus. Wow, that's a big deal right there. What is truth, Pilate asked. With this, he went out again to the Jews and said, I find no basis for a charge against him, but it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to re release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, no, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in a rebellion. Then Psalm 9. Psalm chapter 9. I praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. I will, I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. My enemies turn back. They stumble. They perish before you, for they have upheld my right and my cause. You have, set on, you have sat on your throne judging righteously. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. Endless ruin has overtaken the enemy. They have uprooted their cities. Even the memory of them has perished. The Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He will judge the world in righteousness, and he will govern the peoples with justice. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name will trust in you. For you, O Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Sing praise to the Lord enthroned in Zion. Proclaim among the nations what he has done. For he, for he who avenges blood remembers he does not ignore the cry of the afflicted. O Lord, see how my enemies persecute me. Have mercy and lift me up from the gates of death that I may declare your praises in the gates of the daughter of Zion and there rejoice in your salvation. The nations have fallen into the pit they've dug. Their feet are caught in the net they have hidden. The Lord is known by his justice. The wicked are ensnared by the work of their hands. The wicked return to the grave, all the nations that forgot God. But the needy will not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the afflicted ever perish. Arise, O Lord, let not man triumph. Let the nations be judged in your presence. Strike them with terror, O Lord. Let the nations know they are but men. Deuteronomy chapter 5. Deuteronomy. Chapter 5. <clears throat> and he does the Ten Commandments again in the fifth chapter of Deuteronomy. Moses summoned all Israel and said, Hear, O Israel, the decrees and laws I declare in your hearing today. Learn them and be sure to follow them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Horeb, it was not with our fathers that the Lord made this covenant, but with us, with all of us who are alive here today. The Lord spoke to you face to face out of the fire of the mountain. At that time, I stood between the Lord and you to declare to, declare to you the word of the Lord, because you were afraid of the fire and did not come up to the mountain. And he said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children of the, for the sin of the fathers to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my command, commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Observe the, observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, as the Lord your God has commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but on the seventh day, the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your ox, nor your donkey, or any of your animals, nor the alien within your gates, so that your manservant and maidservant may rest as you do. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God brought you out, out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. Honor your father and mother as the Lord your God has commanded. 
you so that you may live long and that it may go well with you in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, you shall, you shall not set your desire on your neighbor's house or land or manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. These are the commandments the Lord proclaimed in a loud voice to your whole assembly there on the mountain from out of the fire. The cloud and the dark and the deep darkness and he added nothing more. Then he wrote them on two stone tablets and gave them to me. When you heard the voice out of the darkness, while the mountain was ablaze with fire, and all the leading men of your tribes and your elders came to me, and you said, "The Lord our God has shown us his glory and his majesty, and we have heard his voice from the fire. Today we have seen that a man can live even if God speaks to him. But now why should we die? The great fire will consume us, and we will die if we hear the voice of the Lord our God any longer. For what mortal man has ever heard the voice of the living God speaking out of a fire as we have and survived? Go near and listen to all the Lord our God says. Then tell us whatever the Lord our God tells you. We will listen and obey. The Lord heard you when you spoke to me, and the Lord said to me, I have heard what this people said to you. Everything they said was good. Oh, that their hearts would be inclined to fear me and keep all my commandments, all my commands always, so that it might go well with them and their children forever. Go tell them to return to their tents, but you stay here with me so that I may give you all the commands, decrees, and laws that you are to teach them to follow in the land I'm giving them to possess. So be careful to do what the Lord your God has commanded you. Do not turn aside to the right or to the left. Walk in all the way the Lord your God has commanded you so that you may live and prosper and, and uh, prolong the days in the land that you will possess. The Lord has spoken. Let's pray. Father, thanks for speaking today and for a, a change in our lives with the truth we hear from you. Make us different, Father, because we heard your word today and bless this day as we go forth to live it under your will. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.